Hello. I just got back from the grocery store and um, I went to Subway because I wanted a Subway sandwich. But I also wanted some uh, potato salad. So I got a Veggie Delight. And um, I was gonna wait. I have all kinds of PO stuff I wanted to show you guys. People have been so nice to me. I've gotten so much stuff for my birthday this week. I was going to talk about it later in my vlog as I was driving around, but my cousin Caroline just called me. I left to go get something to eat. And um, she said that her dad passed away today. And I've talked about it on here before. He's been sick for a long time. He's been in hospice. And I guess it was a different kind of hospice that they, like, don't resuscitate them. And she thinks that he had a heart attack. She was the only one at She said I was the only one at home. And she said she walked in there and he was gone. I know this sounds so stupid, like, you guys are probably like, well, why are you talking about it on video? Like, I've called Alex, I called my dad, I called Tanya. This is what I do. You know, I get on here and I talk about my life. <laughs> and I knew he was going to go. Because... He was very, very sick. Caroline had said he was miserable. He didn't want to live anymore. I guess he had said something to her about, like, I don't want to get to the point where you have to change my diapers. And she said that they were, like, days away from that, kind of, because things were getting really bad. So, you know, like, I mean, he lived a great life. He had a great life. I mean, he had sadness and stuff, too, but... I feel like everybody that I knew is gone. You know, like first my mom and then my Aunt Kathy and then my Uncle Dave. And my dad was so upset when I called them because they were so close, you know? Like everybody from my mom's side of the family except for Caroline, they're all gone. They're all gone. It's just me and Caroline. We're the only ones left. There's just nobody on that side of the family anymore. <laughs> I feel like nobody knows my history, you know? And maybe that's not important. I don't know. Maybe it's just not important that somebody knows your history, but it feels important to me. I was standing and I got these cookies. <laughs> I've never even heard of these cookies before, these Dewey's Bakery cookies. And I was standing in the line at the grocery store. I'm just like numb at this point. You know, I just got off the phone with my dad. And my stepmom, was. she loved my uncle and she's very upset about it. And Caroline's son was super close with him. I mean, his best friend was my, my uncle. Was, But anyway, I was like craving those Archway lemon ice cookies that I used to eat as a kid. There was this guy that was standing there. He's probably about 10 or 15 years older than me. And he was looking at the cookies. And I said, didn't they used to make those Archway Lemon Ice cookies? And he said, yeah, I think they used to. I remember those. Yeah, though. He goes, but I was, like, looking for the frosted uh, animal crackers. And they finally brought those back. And I said, you want to relive a part of your youth? And you can't because there's no Lemon Archway cookies. And I started crying in the fucking grocery store. I'm like, what is wrong with you, you know? These are not what I wanted. <laughs> They're pretty good, though.
Life is so short. I say it in my videos all the time, you guys. I say it all the time in my videos, but I mean it. Like, life is so short. Like, live it. Embrace it, you know? Feel your emotions. Feel sad. Don't be embarrassed about it. It doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't matter what somebody thinks of you, you know? It really, really doesn't. I'm telling you. It just doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what anybody thinks of you. People are going to like you. People are going to hate you. It's whatever, you know? Live the life you want to live. Because we're not going to be here forever. He had a good life. He was in his 80s. Traveled a lot. And with the rest of that cookie. <laughs> I mean, really, selfish we, felt, selfishly we grieve because of our loss most of the time, unless it's like some tragedy, you know, somebody's young and it's a horrible, you know, whatever, car accident or something, overdose, but I mean, he lived a good life. He was miserable. He didn't want to be here anymore. You know, I understand that, but I guess I don't really understand that. I'm not in that situation. I can't, I, I don't know that I could understand that situation unless I was there. But today, I know I don't feel that way. I'm thankful I don't feel that way. I have so many friends that have been that, you know, suicidal. And but I mean, he wasn't. That was that. He died of a heart attack, supposedly. So Caroline said she just walked in there and he was gone. What do you say? And I said, Caroline, I love you so much. And she said, I love you too, Peter. <sighs> what a way to start a vlog, right? And I know you guys don't care. I know you don't. That's why I feel so safe and comfortable to share this stuff because you guys are always so awesome. All right, I'm gonna go eat now. I've got that out. I'll probably talk about it later on my vlog. So when you come back, when I come back, I'll probably talk a little bit about it. He was a great guy, you know? And very classy. Always treated my aunt and my mom with respect even when they drove him crazy. <laughs> was one of the only guys that my mom would ever listen to, actually, you know. And she loved him so much. And I'm just sitting here thinking, you know, because I do believe in an afterlife that maybe they're all together. I hope so. I really hope so. But I don't want people to suffer. That's selfish, you know. And Caroline's doing okay. So, all right, you guys, I'll be back a little bit later. All right. I am on the way to Tanya's house to take her to the kennel to let the dogs out and um, to get a fountain pop. Whew. Alex, I, I, so I ate my dinner, which was delicious. And, uh, then I uh, took a nap and I literally slept for like an hour and 45 minutes. I just completely crashed, which was nice with the dogs. Alex went out to dinner with his friend like he does every Wednesday night. And um, they went to Ruth Chris. I don't know if you guys have Ruth Chris where you're at. I don't know if it's a chain or not, but it's like a steakhouse. And uh, up here it's like really nice and they have like a patio and everybody comes on Wednesday nights and they have like cheap wine and apps so like they got appetizers and a couple glasses of wine I guess and he just got home and we were talking about my uncle Dave and now Alex is pretty upset about it but um 
bunny rabbit. Every time I see a bunny rabbit, I always think, because somebody taught me this years ago that seeing a bunny is a sign of good luck. Uh, but Alex is, uh, I don't know, he's really, really close with my aunt and my uncle. I always talk about this in my other video, so I thought I would show you. Here's, you guys want to see my, like, I'm, like, so out of it tonight, you guys. I'm just, like, like, it's just almost kind of, like, I can't take any more loss. I just kind of feel almost to the point. I wouldn't say numb. Like, I don't feel numb at all. I just, uh, I was expecting this, you know? I, it was interesting because before we left to go to the Dominican Republic, um, I did not want something to happen to my uncle while I was gone. Um, I, I really thought, like, he would get very sick, and then they would say he has a couple days, and so I wanted to be able to make sure that I was here to oh, say goodbye, you know, like, which that's what Alex and I were just talking about, is that, like, we didn't get to say goodbye to him. But I had... You know, I mean, he's been sick for a long time, so. Anyway, this is just, this is stupid. I don't, it just doesn't matter. I'm just gonna show you the chapstick and the lip plumper that I use before I go to bed. That's stupid, it's, but you know, like, that's the kind of stuff, like the simple kind of stuff that like, I don't know, just gets me through shit, you know? to my dad tonight and I think it's weird for my dad you know like you know, my dad's 78 he just retired this month or this May you know and uh, like my mom's gone my aunt's gone my uncle's gone like my aunt on my dad's side is, like, very sick. You know, my dad's brother died. It's like my dad's the youngest of five. Like, his parents are gone, you know? All of his aunts and uncles are gone. And I think to some degree, it's like my dad, like, stands there. Like, he, he tries to be so strong. Like, my dad, you know, it's like, he's, my dad is somebody that is, for being, he's, my dad's very tall and he's very masculine. But he's somebody that's very emotionally vulnerable. Like, he allows himself to be emotionally vulnerable, you know? And, um, like, I can just hear the pain on the phone talking to him, you know. And I honestly, like, I can't imagine, like, being in my dad's shoes, you know? Like, I mean, he could live to be 100. He probably will. Um, my grandma was 93, and my uncle that passed away was, I don't know, 93 or 94 or something like that, you know? But his next sister up, she's very, very healthy. But I think, like, you would have to get to a point where you look at everything and you think, like, everybody I know is leaving. You know, I already feel like that. I'm 46. I feel like I don't have anybody that knows my history, you know, like I said. But except for my dad and my stepmom. I mean, that's one of the perks of having a stepmom that's so much younger, you know, than your dad. I mean, she'll be around for a long time. She's 12 years older than me. Unless something, you know, horrible would happen, but I don't think that will. I hope that won't happen, you know? But I would have to think, like, for my dad, it's weird, you know? Like, all these people that were my youth, all these people that I, like, grew up with. I mean, you know, like... And he and my aunt and uncle were very, very close. Like, that's why I said my stepmom was very upset about it. Like, they were close with them. Like, they really, like, they did stuff with my uh, aunt and uncle long after my mom and... Because my, my mom, okay, so my dad was friends with my aunt and my, before my mom dated him. And my dad, so, okay, my mom's friend Susie that I talked about, she was really good friends with my aunt Kathy. Like, they were in the same uh, sorority class. Oh, I think Susie was the year in between. So it was like my mom, Susie, then Kathy. My mom, Susie, then Kathy, I think. And um, so Susie and Kathy were really good friends. Susie actually introduced my mom and my dad. And um, so my dad was really good friends with Kathy, my Aunt Kathy, because they were in the same, like, class um, at IU. And my dad was a, pi or was a Fiji and my aunt was a Pi Fi. 
And so those houses would do stuff together. So my dad knew my aunt, and he was friends with her like years before my mom came into the picture. And um, so my dad was real close with my aunt and uncle, you know? It's just so weird. It's so weird when you like, there's nobody that like is around anymore that like, you know, I don't know. And I don't know that it really matters, but it's like every time I talk to Susie on the phone, there's always like that five minutes where I just like break down and cry because like Susie has such a connection to my youth, you know? It's like Susie and her girls used to always come every summer and visit. So like every time I talk to her on the phone, there's always like that moment that I break down for a little bit, you know? Because it's just like, it's, it's not just my mom or my, you know, whatever, my aunt, it's my youth. It's my growing up, you know? And I don't have anybody to talk to about those stories. I don't have aunts and uncles just anymore to sit around with and tell swap stories about like what happened when I was growing up and truth be told my aunt and uncle weren't really the kind of people that like to do that anyway you know so and they both lived a life I mean they had some great lives but exactly how old he was. I think he was like 83. So, you know, if I got, and my uncle was very healthy. Like he walked every day, like every day from like 35 till today. He like, well, not today, but like till six months ago. And he was a long-term heart patient. Like he had his first heart attack two weeks before my cousin got married. And she got married the summer after I got sober. So 23 years ago, he had his first heart attack. I cannot tell you how many times this man has been in the hospital. I mean, like, literally four or five, six times a year for heart issues. He smoked in his youth. He quit when he was about 45, 50. He drank. I mean, not all the time, but he drank. And I thought, you know, like, if I live to be that old, I'm only halfway through my life. Like, I have a lot of life to live yet, you know? And he was definitely somebody that lived. Like, I mean, he really lived. He was a good example of what a fantastic life was. And when people pass away, I, I try to look at their life, you know, as an example for living. And what are the things that I can take from that that um, make me want to be a better person, you know? life or I just don't want to be stuck you know but I think it's important to get your emotions out and to get your feelings out and, and that's why I do choose to show these things on my vlog is that I want people to know it's okay you know like it's okay to feel your feelings it's okay to be sad it's okay to long for yesteryear and it's okay to miss people in your life like that's all okay you know I say this a lot in my videos. Feelings are not facts, right? But they're still my feelings, and I have a right to them. And um, and what I mean by that is that, like, because I feel a certain way about something doesn't make it a fact. Somebody else might feel similarly about the same situation completely differently, and that's fine. But they're my feelings, and I have a right to them. And, you know, honestly, it took me till I was about in my late thirties to get to the point where I really was able to embrace my feelings and say, they're my feelings. They're my feelings. And if I want to show them to the world, I will. And if I decide to not show them at all, that's okay too. And so I think a lot of times we want to push people into feeling emotion that they shouldn't have to, you know, it's like, 
when I was talking to my cousin today on the phone, I just allow, allowed her to be, you know? I just let her talk. And then at the end, I just, you know, let her go. I was like, she doesn't want to be on the phone right now. And that's okay. I wouldn't want to be on the phone either. I don't even know what I would say. And I think deep down, you know, each of us, I think we know what we want or need in that moment. I mean, we're not very good about asking for it sometimes because none of us are very good about asking for what we need, I don't think. Even me, you know? I, I still, I mean, can preach all this positivity and all this kind of stuff, but and openness and vulnerability and authenticity, but put me in the moment of some kind of sadness or tragedy. I don't know what to ask for sometimes. I don't know what I need, you know? But I try to do a better job of clarifying that, you know? Like, Alex and I just had a very honest conversation, you know, because he came in and he sat down on the bed and he was like, how are you doing? And I said, I'm doing okay. I said, I, honestly, I, I am, I'm doing okay, I'm sad. And I said, how are you doing? And he said, I'm sad. And he said, I'm real sad, you know? Um, but Alex had a different relationship with them than I did. And, you know, like, this is really... My aunt and uncle have been the first relatives that he has known that have passed away. They're the first people in his life, the first elders that have passed away, that he's had good relation, that he's sat across from and have gone, you know? His grandfather died years ago when I first met him. But other than that, like, these are people that Alex saw on a regular basis that are gone. And... You know, so we were just kind of sitting there asking each other what we needed, you know, from the other person. And I was telling him what Caroline had told me, you know, the details and stuff. And I just feel blessed to have such an amazing husband, you know, that we're able to communicate on that level and share life with each other. And just because we people grieve separately just because he and I grieve separately it doesn't mean that we can't grieve together you know what I mean I've said this for a long time I learned this from my mom those things that are toughest of lo in life you know happen on some random Tuesday afternoon when you don't expect it and that is the absolute truth I mean I filmed my videos today I you know <laughs> ran a bunch of errands I was very productive and then I'm getting ready to go get subway sandwich and sit down and have some din dinner and boom you know I get the call I didn't expect that I didn't wake up today thinking today was the day that I was gonna get that call isn't that strange like we you never know when life can change just a split second, you know? And that's really, truly why we have to really appreciate life because you don't know when it's going to change just that quick. I mean, none of us does, you know? And so we have to, I think, for me at least, I have to be really appreciative of each moment. All right, I'm picking up Tanya Jean and then I will be back in just a little while. All right, I'm back. Drop Tanya off, and now I'm driving around listening to my audiobook. I don't know what I would do without her, honestly. Like, she is just such my heart stone. You know, we were talking, and I was like, I said, you know, Tanya, I said, I think I'm ready to make some changes in my life. And she said, uh, She's like, yeah, I feel the same way. And I said, I'm just kind of like, I don't know. I feel like, you know, do you ever feel like this where you go through your life and you're like, okay, I feel like I got to decide what I want to stay and what I want to go in my life. You know what I mean? Like there's so much about my life that's fantastic. And I feel like every couple years I shred some, you know, baggage that both within myself and, you know, people in my life that I'm invested in maybe more than they're invested in me. And I was like, you know, I feel like my marriage is exactly where I want it to be right now. It could, it could always be better, but I'm very happy with my husband, you know, and I said, you're my constant. I said, I've got a few other friends, you know, like Melissa, my sponsor's fantastic. Like, I feel like I'm on solid ground. And there's been a lot of periods in my life where I feel like I'm in transition. Like, I don't feel like I have solid footing, but I do feel like I have solid footing right now. And, 
you know, coming up on turning 46 on Friday and with my uncle passing away. It just really puts my life into perspective about what I want my life to stand for, what I want my life to be. And I think to some degree, like the last year and a half of vlogging every day and talking in my car <laughs> about me and my life and my thoughts, and then doing the Peterisms videos since December has really like, I don't know, it's been extremely cathartic for me. It's hot in here. It's been extremely cathartic for me, but it's also, like, made me really look at my life on a different level, you know? Like, me saying remain teachable, which is also a t-shirt, a mug, and a, a sweatshirt on my merch shop listed below. Go check it out. Um, but me saying remain teachable has kind of become this mantra, you know, that, like, I remind myself of when I say it. It's not just for you guys. I mean, it's for me to remind myself that I need to remain teachable. And every time that it comes out of my mouth, you know, I, I think that to myself. And, you know, when I turn the camera off a lot of times after the vlog or after I've done my videos during the day, I keep on thinking about the things I've talked about, you know? And when I started talking about this whole idea of my goal in life currently wanting to be a better version of myself every day, but to be more compassionate, more loving, more kind, I have found myself doing that, you know, because it's more of a conscious effort. Um, even just in conversations like with Tanya and I, we're really there are no boundaries, and, you know, we talk about whatever, whoever, you know, it's like anything goes. Like, even in ways that I would have maybe talked about somebody with her before, like, where I would have said, I mean, if we're talking about somebody, I would have said, yeah, but, like, my feelings are really hurt, or whatever. Like, I have found myself in the last few months putting myself in that person's shoes, and really thinking about what it might be like from their perspective, you know, that I don't understand somebody until I'm standing in their shoes and making my drama videos and really trying to look at like, you know, no matter who I'm making a video about, whether it's Trisha or Gigi or Jaclyn Hill or whoever, I talk about these people like I know them, I don't know them, you know, but whoever, Shane Dawson, whatever, and I really look, you know, Graveyard Girl, I look at it from their point of view and say, this is how I would feel if I were them, you know, like, because really, at the end of the day, people are people. And, um, you know, it's interesting because Tanya and I were tonight talking about the Real Housewives of New York. We were actually talking about, like, all of the Housewives and every season and which season we think is, like, the realest. Like, like I am a diehard Candy fan from Re uh, Atlanta. I just think she's the real deal. I think she doesn't put up with bullshit. I think she's self-made. I think she's independent. I, I really love Candy, but on some level, although she's annoying, I really like Vicky from the OC as well. And we were talking about like our favorites from different counties, and we were talking or different areas, and we were talking about um, Luann on The Real Housewives of New York because she supposedly just recently got sober. And um, we were talking about it, and I was like, do you think it's interesting that she's drinking, uh, oh, what do you call it, like, alcohol-free beer? Because, like, that's not something that I would, I, I, I don't know anybody in early recovery that drinks near beer, you know what I mean, that drinks that fake beer. It has a certain amount of alcohol in it, first of all. But, like, for me, I've never romanced, I've never romanced the bottle. Like, I don't drink a Coke in a wine glass. I just don't do that. And I don't know many people in recovery that do. And so Tanya and I were talking and she said something and we were talking about it and I said, but at the same time, like, can you imagine coming right, I mean, like, we both went to treatment. We both went to 30, 30 days of treatment, which is what Luann did. And I said, can you imagine coming out of treatment and immediately, I mean, immediately after you're out of treatment, 
what you're doing is being filmed for a television show, like your early days of sobriety, which are not your proudest moments, it's not your prettiest moments, are being filmed for the entire world. You know, and I think we live in this world of re just reality television and YouTubers and I mean, even me, you know, and um, it's hard, you know, I mean, it is, it's hard sometimes because I just don't ever, like for me, I don't ever think about like, I mean, there's obviously things that I don't share but really the things I don't share are like intimate issues with my husband and I out of, you know, like consideration of him, if that makes sense. Like he, this is not his channel. So he chooses not to have a channel on YouTube and, you know, right now. And so there are certain things that I don't, you know, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, if, what I mean by that is like, if he comes home and he doesn't want to be on film, I'm not going to force him to be on film. I'm not going to do that. You know what I mean? Um, but I do talk about the majority of the things that happen in our marriage and the marriage counseling and things like that that have been so, you know, helpful for us and um, difficulties in marriage. I think it's important to talk about those things, but, you know, if, if possibly I can just help one other person. But at the same time, it's like I have a lot of friends of mine. Um, like, I haven't even had this conversation with my new sponsor yet about whether or not she would even want to be in a video. Like, I don't know. I mean, she may say, no, I have absolutely no desire. Like, you know, I'm anonymous about this. Please don't put me in a video. I, I, in fact, I think she probably would feel that way. So, you know, like all of my recovery friends, I just say things like, I'm going to have coffee with a sober, a sober friend. Like, I don't say who it is, but some of those people are as close to me as Melissa and Tanya. You know what I mean? But you guys don't see them on film because they've chosen not to be on film because of their job, their jobs, or because of their kids, and they don't want everybody knowing that they're sober, you know? Like, there's still a stigma that's attached to that. And, um, so, I think it would be hard when you're on a show like that. You know, I don't know. I just think a lot more recently about... And, and, you know, I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that in October, I reread To Kill a Mockingbird, and, you know, the whole idea of Atticus Finch, you don't truly know somebody until you stand on their front porch and see things from their point of view. You really don't, you know? It's easy to cast judgment on somebody or pass judgment on somebody. I keep on saying cast judgment. I don't know why. I've said that the last couple videos. It's easy to pass judgment on somebody. You know, I was reading the comments today, so I made a video on my drama channel about, like, Jacqueline Hill, the beauty influencer, and her husband have recently gotten divorced, and he posted a picture with another woman, and or a video, and, you know, when I was reading through the comments underneath this video, it was interesting to me. I thought, and I do it too, because I make drama videos, so obviously I'm sharing my opinion about these things, but, you know, I thought it's interesting that all of us have an opinion about these things that, yes, they're public figures. Sure, we're invested in them. We're watching the story of their lives. That's what's interesting to us. But at the end of the day, really, we don't have any right to that. We don't have any, I don't have any attachment to that past the, you know, value of watching them from afar. But then I was thinking about like you guys watching my videos. It's like, that's how I feel with other YouTubers. It's like, I feel very attached, you know? I do feel like it's a very personal relationship. And, um, So, there is an investment there. So, I think it goes past just making a judgment statement into really feeling emotionally moved towards that person or being protective over that person. And, I don't know, I find myself very protective over some of my YouTubers, you know? Um, I'm not big on leaving a lot of comments on videos. I never have, not even when I made, before I made YouTube videos. But I do read a lot of the comments. And so, um, I don't know. It's just interesting to me. You know, it's like you don't really truly understand somebody until you walk around in their shoes for a while. It's the truth. You know, you don't. None of us do. And um, I think that's definitely one thing that's really changed in me in the last couple of years. You know, to own my truth and be honest, I would have to say that I... I've never been somebody that's kind of like, 
I mean, this is so funny, being that I'm a drama channel, right? But I'm talking about more in my personal life, you know? That I don't really... Like, I don't feel like I judge people, like, about, you know, hair, like, their hair, their style, and stuff like that. Like, I just don't. But do I ever internally just go, like, seriously, did you wear that sweater? You know what I mean? Like, sure. I, have, I mean, yes, of course I have. I think we all do that, you know? Like, oh, God, Mom, why are you wearing that outfit? Or, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like my husband has real cute style, but there's been times in his... Um, in our relationship where he's really missed the mark, you know what I mean? With hairstyles and uh, my husband, because, you know, he does a lot of stuff within the hair industry. He's had every different hairstyle out there. His hair right now is pretty normal. But there have been times before where I've like, hmm. And he's like, do you like my hair? I'm like, yes, yeah, you know, it's risky. <laughs> <laughs> my mom said that to my ex one time. She, uh, we were sitting there and he, like, oh, it was like very first time my mom ever uh, met my ex. He was a hairstylist and she said, or he is a hairstylist and she said, now what do you, what do you do? And he's like, I'm in cosmetology school. And she looked at him and she, my mother, she cracks me up. She goes, or she cracked me up. She goes, cosmetology school, like you want to work on dead bodies? And he goes, no, he goes, cosmetology school is like hair and uh, esthetician stuff. So he was explaining it to her. She's like, oh. And at the time, he had like naturally brown hair and it was like colored like a copper color. And she looked at him and she goes, that's an interesting hair color. And he said, thanks. And she goes, that's risky. <laughs> and I always think about that. But we've all had those moments, haven't we? Like where we think we look real good, but we don't, you know? And then you look back on it, you go, oh my God. If you look, go back to high school, I, my, I have to be honest, my high school pictures don't look that bad. I mean, they just really don't. They look like I stepped out of a John Hughes movie. But I'm telling you right now, were there some moments in high school that I looked absolutely foolish? Absolutely, yes, oh my God. At one point I had this flock of seagulls hairdo that, you know, one side hung down real low and it was all shaved over on the side. And man, I, you know, I'd throw that hair back. I thought I was it. I thought I was the answer to the world. I thought you could not tell me that hairdo wasn't fantastic. I look back and I mean, whenever I was hanging out with my girlfriends, I always had that hair back in a headband, you know, but it just swooped over. I mean, what was I thinking out of the Arby's and the, what was that place we used to go to? The Shoney's breakfast bar and uh, the racks. Do y'all remember the racks? <laughs> we would get pudding and breadsticks at the racks. And um, there I'd be, you know, in a good Genera. Do you remember Genera? Genera sweatshirt with it, my hair back in it. <laughs> How nobody knew I was gay is beyond me. Gosh. I always kind of knew how to dress the part, though. You know, for, like, holidays and things like that, I always, like, looked very nice, swooped my hair over, made it look good, you know, wore a button-down collared shirt. <laughs> We've all had those style moments, haven't we? It's funny because, like, Alex has always been very interested in clothes and hair and things like that, you know, and looking good, but he takes extremely nice care of his clothes, and, um, but what's interesting is, in the last couple years, last two years specifically, I would say, like, his style has really elevated, like, he really thinks it through, like, I'm putting an outfit together, he dresses very professional for work, but it's always a little bit with a flair. Like, it's very style. Like, I used to tell women this, like, that I would, you know, that were friends of mine. They would say, because I used to, so one of my jobs when I worked in treatment was I was part of a team and we would interview new counselors that came in. I cannot tell you how many times through the years. I mean, probably a hundred interviews I did. And so many people would come in, you know, in the traditional black suit, which I think that's, you know, if you're going to show up to a interview, I think that's appropriate. But when you're going to show up for an interview, make sure that your interview outfit kind of matches like what you're going to do. And so women would say, well, like, since you've interviewed so many people, what would you recommend? And I would say, okay, if you're going to do a black suit, do like a, like a pop of color shirt that's like real fun, like a Kelly green shirt, you know, underneath it. Because then people see like the, 
it, you look appropriate, you look business, but you look fun, too. Like, hey, this is a fun person that can joke around and whatever. You know, and guys would say to me, okay, well, what, what should I wear, like, in an interview situation? And I'd say, well, I do think it's appropriate for men. I, I do. I believe this. To wear a tie to an interview. Period. Okay? I don't care if you're showing up to McDonald's for an interview. Wear a tie. Go buy, if you don't have money to buy a tie, go to Goodwill and buy a tie for a dollar and wear a tie to an interview. It sh what it says is, I respect you enough to give me the opportunity to interview me. I cannot tell you how many times people would show up to interviews literally in shorts and a polo shirt and I would be like, "Are you? this is a job interview, seriously? And if this is your best to impress us, that this is a problem. I don't know what business casual would be for you. You know what I mean? But, um... And I think those things do matter. I really, really do. And maybe I'm old school, you know? I always called my neighbors Mr. and Mrs. And, you know, wear a tie to church on Sundays and to weddings. That's just who I am, you know? Old school. But you guys see how addicted to this shit I am. I said Tanya use all this stuff. She goes, I love this. Oh, Lord. So, it is so foggy out tonight. Um, but... So guys would say, well, what should I wear to a job interview? Now, I think if you're going to do an executive job interview or something like that, I think it's appropriate to wear a suit and tie, okay? Period. Like, obviously. You know, you have your MBA or you have, went to, you know, Kelly School of Business or somewhere like that, and you're going to a business interview in a major office or even if it's not like that. But if it's some kind of executive job in an office building, you need to wear a suit and tie. End of story. Period. Do I think it's appropriate to wear some... Jerry Garcia tie to a job interview for it? No. I think you need to wear a very conservative tie. That's what I recommend to people. Because really what people want to see is what you can do in your mind. They're not worried about the suit in that situation. But if you're, go if you're a man and you're going to interview for something, let's say like, you know, a counseling position or something like that, I don't think you have to wear a suit and tie. Do I think that, you know, it looks nice? Sure. Do I think it might be a little overdressed? Yeah. I think it could be perceived as a little bit overdressed. But I thought it was always, you know, very appropriate when men would come in and they would have on, like, khaki pants or gray pants. And then, you know, they would wear, like, um, a light blue collared shirt with a navy blue blazer. And then they would have a, a fun kind of tie. Like, not a Jerry Garcia funny tie. Not a funny tie, okay? But, like... A fun tie, like a green striped tie, or like a very J. Crew looking kind of tie. And what that says is, see, I can be creative. I, I can, I'm a team player, but yet I can also be professional. Like I take myself and I take this job very seriously. Is that the moon right there? Is that seriously the moon? So anyway, do you know what I'm saying? What is going on? That is kind of spooking me out. That must be the moon. I don't see it in my rear view mirror. Um, anyway, but you know what I'm saying? Like, I think that that's appropriate. That is either like a ghost or that is the moon. I'm pulling over. I gotta see. That's freaking me out. I'm like on this country road pulling over. What am I doing? Because you know, if it's a ghost, I'm a goner. It's the moon. <laughs> you guys are like, what is this conversation? I don't know. But it feels good and it's got my mind off things tonight. And you know, and that's really what Tanya did for me. I mean, she's so fantastic. We got talking about all kinds of stuff. And at the end, she was like, I'm really sorry about your uncle. She's like, let me know in the services and stuff. And I said, thank you for getting my mind off stuff. You know, I think that's what friends do for each other. You know what I mean? It's nice. I opened that door and my windshield immediately fogged up. It's nice to not always have to be so deep in your mind, you know, about things. I like to drive around sometimes with like no music or anything and just think to myself and... I was doing that after I dropped Tani off and before I listened to my audiobook. I was just kind of thinking about my uncle a little bit, you know, and... I very much believe in an afterlife, and... I like to think that 
maybe a reunion of sorts has occurred, you know? I can only hope for all of us, you know? And you don't have to believe that, but I like to believe that. And if not, then that's also another reason why it's important to live your best life, I think. So, well, thank you guys for listening to my range of emotions tonight. I appreciate it. It means a lot to me. Um, you know, it's interesting because I started this vlog at a time when my drama channel wasn't doing very well. And I don't want to get into all that, but a lot of people had unsubscribed to my channel and I just didn't know what was going on with it. And so I thought, well, you know what? Like, uh, I just love making videos. So I'm going to make another channel for people that like to listen to me, you know? And that's how this channel started. But it also started because I wanted it to be a diary of my life, of where I talked about things from the past, I talked about things in the present. I just shared my life. I wanted that documentation, you know? And um, what's interesting is I've gained so much from this experience. Like... such a believer in blessings in disguise. You know, you never really know when you're doing something what the payoff will be. But just talking tonight has helped me so much. You know, it's helped me, you know, Alex and I talked tonight, Tanya and I talked, but like, just to sit here and be able to talk about my feelings about things and to cry and feel my emotions at the same time. So thank you, um, you guys, for always being there and allowing me to, to be myself and to share my life. And and I already know that you guys are going to say such nice things in this video. I already know that. Um, so thank you because I appreciate it ahead of time. And, you know, I guess if I had, you know, any kind of message to give you, I would say... leave people every time you're saying goodbye you know remembering that you may not see that person again and just always when you're with somebody letting them know really how important they are to you and that doesn't have to be a you know overabundance of words it doesn't have to say oh you're so important to me you're so important to me that can just be you know like I love you or you know, hey, thanks for driving around with me tonight, Tanya, you know? It's just important not to, to leave anything unsaid, I think. All right, you guys, I love you, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.